More accurate readings of changes to Singapore's land height and sea levels will be available under a new partnership by the Singapore Land Authority and NTU's Earth Observatory of Singapore. Uh, they will be collaborating to use Global Navigation Satellite System Data, or GNSS, to measure climate changes in Singapore. For more, Feng Lu Jia, Principal Research Fellow at NTU's Earth Observatory of Singapore, joins us with more. Uh, Dr Feng, first, uh, first of all, Explain for us, as simply as you can, what Global Navigation Satellite System is and what can you do now with this technology that we couldn't do before? Well, you may not have heard of GNSS, but you must have heard about GPS, Global Positioning System. So GNSS is just a more general term that describes any satellite constellations provide positioning, navigation, and timing services. So GSS includes GPS and other GPS-like systems. Right, so this whole... And it can measure... Carry on. It can measure uh, land height changes and how the Earth moves. And the, the new recent advancement of GSS is is, can be also measured for sea level changes. All right, and, and uh, the question of this technology is its accuracy, isn't it? It gives us a level of accuracy that we did not have before. Yes, so using GSS, we can measure land height changes down to millimeter level and the sea level changes down to centimeter level. I understand that there will be up to four new coastal GNSS reference stations installed all across Singapore, and that is for the purpose of collecting as much data as we can. Uh, I'm wondering what were the considerations that your team had to look into when you were deciding where to install these reference stations? The new coastal GNSS stations will be used to measure both land height and the sea level. So first, they have to be very close to the sea so they can receive the reflected signals from the sea surface. Second, the sea area cannot be along busy ship routes because we want signals from the sea surface, not from the ships. Now, it is, if I'm... Not wrong, a, a four-year partnership. Uh, is that really long enough uh, to be able to get the kind of information that you need? Uh, SLA Siren Iowa has been around more than a decade already. So we'll be using the historical data and also future data we'll be collecting using uh, both Siren Network and future coastal stations. So for, for us, the longer the better. <laughs> and we are already in a changing climate. So we need to step up now to do more measurements to track out the changes of climate. Uh, absolutely. You talked about having access to some old satellite data uh, archives, if you like. Um, is that important for us to know uh, in terms of what happened in the decades that went by so that we uh, can project into the land height and sea levels of the future? Is it important? It is very important because the past is the key to the future. So for us, um, the very precise measurements of past land height changes and sea levels will be incorporated into Earth models we run at the Earth Observatory of Singapore to improve our understanding of the physical driving mechanisms behind the land height and sea level change uh, and the extreme events too. So these improved understanding of the physics is very important for future projection, more accurate future projection of future sea level and the line changes. Uh, most of our audience uh, would 
probably like to know when you're looking at this data and using this technology, what are the changes that you are seeing in the environment, in the land heights of Singapore, in the sea levels of Singapore? What's being revealed right now? One important change we're already seeing in the data is that Singapore has subsided due to the recent great earthquakes in Sumatra, Indonesia. So this is important because when land subsides, even sea level is not moving, what we feel is sea level rise. We are already experiencing rising sea levels and increased rainfall, heavy rainfall because of climate change. On top of that, if we add land subsidence due to earthquakes and tectonics, will be even more vulnerable to floods. All right, uh, Dr. Feng Lu Jie, Principal Research Fellow at NTU's Earth Observatory of Singapore. I want to thank you for your time and explanation there.